but we've pulled in over eighteen thousand dollars this month. You guys want to see a house where somebody died? He uh, has two trials uh, cases, so one's murder and the other is this one. So they want the uh, murder to go first. This is a house I bought for $13,500 and we're in the process of flipping it. Well, a couple offers on it and they fell through because the inspection failed. The reason the inspection failed is because there is not a, a vent up there, uh, a $50 vent. We're gonna get a reaction. I wanna see what these guys think. Uh, we've got Eric Davis from South Carolina and I got my two interns here. What you guys think about a $13,000 house here in Ohio? We'll hand this to me. I'll give you 14 right now. You give me 14,000 like this. <laughs> <laughs> Are there like booby traps or something in? I mean, that would make sense for the content that I normally do. This is, this is really, really nice for 13.5. Yeah. He said, there's carpet in here? <laughs> Actual floors? Part of this house actually did have dirt floors and we fixed them. Yeah. Okay. So we're in the process of flipping it. And how much do you think you can get for this? Uh, I think I'll probably get 120, maybe 130 off of it. I've got a video series about the house next door to it. We, we redid that, the house next door too. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it just sold last week. How much do you guys think that we made off the other house? The house right next door. Same size as this house, but it has a basement. How much did it sell for? I bought this house for 13,000. I bought the house next door for 42,000. I'm gonna guess you sold it for, 70? I was gonna say 70. I sold it for 70,000? Yeah, mm, that's what I think. Sold it's it for 130. 147.5. Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna sell this place for? Probably 120, 125. About so you, you said you paid 13? 13,000 yeah. for it. What, what's on top of that? I've cost? probably put 60,000 in it at okay. some point. Then I've got some pulling costs. So I wanted to just come here and show you that not everything I have is crap. We came in this house on two separate occasions. A lady of the evening, I assume, had broken in through the window. They had brought in mattresses. So in those back two bedrooms, which weren't bedrooms, we bought it floor, so yeah. people kept breathing in here. But between me buying this house and the house next door, the neighborhood's nice now. We've uh, like 12 x the price of these houses. So where are we? Right here. So I paid 23,000 for this house. I initially put 10 in it. I probably put 10 more thousand in it over the course of nine years. And we're in the process of putting another thousand dollars in it. We just had a house sell down the street in worse shape than this for 110. Uh, we're gonna take a look at this house and we're gonna talk about the uh, quirks and the features with it. But I've got a guy, he's come down, uh, he rebuilt these uh, wood columns. The wood columns are 50 years old. If we look at the top of this porch, the, it's old cr crappy paint. We're repainting the whole uh, porch here. It's been three days since I've been here. There's a note in the door for me. Let's see what it says. I'm very interested in renting this house. ASAP, if you're interested in renting it, please contact me at. Oh, she left it here all today. This lady's already called me twice and I've told her I don't want to rent this place. I'm wanting to sell it. Put a brand new door on the front of the house and I forgot I did not have the right key for it. So we had to go in the back. So we're going in from the back of this house. This is what 20,000, 23,000 plus 20,000 in rehab over ten, almost 10 years does. I'm trying to make a choice. Do I rent it for 900 bucks a month with the current market or do I sell it at 900 bucks a month with a $400 mortgage and costs on it? I'll make a profit of $500 a month, $6,000 a year, or I can sell it and I can make 50 grand off of it. I would rather have rentals like the last one we looked at that are really nice. I can get 1200 bucks a month off of that last house all day long. I had been warned when I first got in real estate by guys with hundreds if not thousands of rentals, at some point I'll want only higher quality properties. And I'm kind of getting to that point that I want higher quality renters and it'll just be less of a management headache. Let's go through and look at what, you know, about $40,000 buys you or at least bought you in Ohio. So in the kitchen here, we put the laminate roll flooring, we put new countertops in, those are original cabinets. We redid all the plumbing with PEX. Here in the living room, we put wood, wood laminate flooring in, and if you look at how the flooring looks, it's crap. $2 a square foot for raw material cost isn't, isn't enough. And if you wanna get good laminate, you've gotta spend three or $4 per square foot. We're finding out that the LVT is a much superior product for less money. The paint held up. We've we're really happy with this kind of paint. And it's a three bed, one bath, but the one bedroom upstairs is kind of fun functionally obsolescent. Small door. Yeah. Small door for small people. <laughs> the bedroom itself is a somewhat decent size. This is like an addition on the house at some point. So we're driving to the back of this property to show you guys what the back of the property look. And we have a really bad vandalism problem in the back in this alleyway of this house we're selling. And if you look, it's local artwork in Southern Ohio. 
They're supposed to be pentagrams, but I think they did a really crappy job. And then the kids that shared their artwork here have broken into the garage with shopping carts here. So that's kind of what this alleyway is dealing with. It used to be worse, if you guys can believe that. Um, but it's getting better, and these problems are very slowly disappearing. But it takes a lot of money to fix these problems. You guys wanna see a house where somebody died? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that one right there. Okay. They're worried now that it's going from a simple accidental fire to an intentional arson murder. Uh, just crazy situation, and because I own the news agency around here, I get all these confidential messages. So I bought this house in 2014. We paid $52,500 for it. And if you've watched my prior videos, this is this was like my favorite tenant in the whole world. The elderly lady that lived here was here uh, since 1979. She had originally rented the side of a duplex out for 150 bucks a month. We're only charging her a little under $400 for this house. My intention was to rehab this into grandma's house as an Airbnb if she ever passed away or she moved, away, moved out of this house. The flooring in here was orange. She had the typical grandma lime green couch, wood paneling throughout the whole home. And unfortunately she passed away a lot quicker than I thought that she would. Um, so we we're kind of rushing around to get the house fixed up. And then we started taking stuff out of the house, just dealing with walls and everything started collapsing. Some of the walls in the house started physically leaning once we started removing stuff. We had to jack up a wall in the house. This, house, this wall over here is leaning. We've jacked it up. We've had to do quite a bit of work. If you look at the ceiling, um, right up top, we've put a new drywall here. That's because a kid, uh, not a kid, but an adult fell through. Anybody that's younger than me is a kid. We had a person fall through. Um, so I had ended up calling one of my um, investors on this and saying, right, let's stop doing low end rehabs on places. Let's do nice rehabs. We went from a $5,000 rehab, or five or $6,000 rehab. We're gonna do a $20,000 rehab. We're gonna go up to seven, seven fifty with the Intel chip plant. It makes a lot more sense for me to do a nicer quality rehab. This is a room we built onto the house. Uh, well, this used to be a screened in porch and doing a uh, extra room. So we didn't have a laundry room. This is a full laundry room, washer, dryer. We've had to insulate it. We've had to, um, we're putting drywall in here shortly. They're testing the drains out. And for our $20,000 investment, we're going to make another $350 per month. We're going to make probably another 4,500 bucks a year off this house based on $20,000 investment. And we're going to increase our tenant quality rate. And we'll still be under the median rent. Eric just asked, what's the median rent for a two bedroom side of a duplex in this area? I'm guessing the average is probably eight to nine hundred dollars a month so we're going to be under that average but as these properties get rehabbed and redone they're increasing the rents to a very high amount our rents are going to continue to go up trying to make sure that my business is in the right position to do that so let's go through and look at the rest of the house guys just holding a wrench it's never usually good. <laughs> on Nobody holding a wrench ever has good intent. Okay, so we're at the trailer park. Great. This month, the holding company for our trailer park, I looked, I pulled the report, and we'll post the magic number on the screen, but we've pulled in over $18,000 this month. Just this month. So I figured I'd take the crew down and we would look at the trailer park because we're actually making lots of progress. Turning over two or three trailers, full rehab a month now. So now we're definitely in the black as far as this, as far as this company goes, but now we're starting to also get a budget to go the extra mile. We're, we're looking at putting in more parking. Um, I'm trying to get a quote on how much a um, garages will cost for these units. I'm trying to get on better terms with the neighbor. We had a situation that I don't think we've ever talked about on YouTube. The owner here flooded the concrete plant over there, did incredible damage because they were letting people throw appliances and trash in a uh, creek behind the um, trailer park. With all those obstructions in the creek, it caused the property to flood, damaged the concrete plant. So I'm trying to get on a better better term with the neighbors next door. So we're gonna go through and look at these trailers and see how, how their co condition's coming along and talk about it some. I mentioned that I do have a warehouse. Here it is. It was full of crap and we sold a lot of it off. We trashed a lot of it. Justin, my maintenance guy that works for me, he bought a, a drink machine in this one for 300 bucks. They're pretty interesting. He's in the process of putting a new compressor in there because it needs one. We're gonna go over here and I'll show you one of the, the long-term projects that I have. These bad boys. That's cool. Yeah. I bought two big gigantic pallets of solar panels. And what we're, my intention is, 
is we're gonna do a challenge or a project of taking a storage locker at my storage locker facility, turning it into a house and I'll live in the house for 24 hours and do like a live stream. The storage locker facility doesn't have any electricity that's currently actively run to it. We've got to meet with the city and get electricity run there, but there's no law that says that I can't put solar power on the facility and these are 350 watt panels. So my intention is to just take four of these from my gigantic supply and they're, you know, I can lift I can lift probably two of these up at one time. I'll probably throw my back out. But, uh, and get an electric set up for a storage locker facility, turn it into a house and show that power run to it, you might be able to build housing for like 30 bucks a square feet. So I wanted to show that to you guys because that's a storyline and a video that I've been working on for over a year that we just haven't put together yet. But now that I've got help, we'll get it done. This is one of the locks that they're turning over right now and I'm pleasantly surprised I haven't been in this one. So this is another two bedroom. It'll rent for probably six, six fifty a month. In between coronavirus and the rampant inflation that we have, uh, a lot of these trailers are going up in price, which is good because we've got probably 80% of the cost baked into the park now. So we, those are already sunk costs in the park. So as we, we're paying more in labor and we're paying more to repair them, but the rents are going up more. We're doing a really good job, I think. I mean, it's probably not as nice as the other house that we were in today. What do you think, Eric? Looks pretty good. Would you live here? Eric? No. No. <laughs> is that because of the condition of the house or is it because of the neighborhood? Both. Both. Okay. <laughs> but I've said this on all my videos. I will not rent a house out unless I would personally live in it. And I get a lot of comments that say, oh, I, this is a dumpy house. I can't believe you rent something like that. It's because I would live in it. I keep saying in my videos, I lived in a house that a lot of times didn't have heat in it. My brother and I would sometimes would have to sleep on furnace vents to stay warm and like throw a blanket over us because the house had holes in the walls. That's my mid-water mark for housing. So everything I have is nicer than that. And I get a lot of comments. People say, I can't believe you rent something like that. Well, considering the price I'm asking for it after inflation. So we'll go through and we're gonna look at a couple of these other places. I just realized this is lot 34 of the trailer park. This is the one that meet Kevin. I had to get a bucket for him to get into this trailer. And he's like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. And I said to him, this trailer will be nicer than the one I grew up in. And he didn't believe me. So meet Kevin. So this is the one that they're telling me is going to be done within like two or three weeks. It's pretty obvious that this one's in the middle of being worked on, and this is another 600-ish rental. And Justin, I'm pretty much just setting Justin loose on the trailer park and saying, fix it up. And I would say 95% of the, the time, he makes a really good choice on how he's rehabbing them. Like we got this uh, AM FM radio from the 1950s with the fake wooden trim. That's gonna come out. He's gonna get rid of all the beef broth in here. And I don't have to deal with it anymore. He's gonna clean, he's, you know, this, this countertop here is trashed. I'm guessing he's going to tear it out. He's going to tear out the gas. He's going to get rid of all the roaches down there. So we're really close to finishing out the park. I mean, I'm not saying that there's, it's you know, perfect yet, but we're cash flow positive. We had a phenomenal march, made over eighteen thousand uh, dollars for the holding company, and we're getting two or three trailers knocked out a month. When I say knocked out, I mean <laughs> done. I wonder if we can find this person through the magic of social media. 1986 Emmy, 1986, just painted cupboards see so we're making really good progress at the trailer park um that's not that all the problems are fate are fixed yet we're getting a lot of good people a lot of better people in the trailer park that are kind of watching out for each other and making sure that we don't have any recurring problems uh, so it's good i haven't had to run off any spoonies or any people to rock i haven't had to pull a uh, water gun on anybody a squirt gun on anybody um recently so um it's good lots of good things are going on here at the trailer park We've got some clear tubing, but I don't think it's going to work for our input output type deal. So I'll rig something up with lots of duct tape or 3D print something. So now we're gonna have three buckets lined up as opposed to one bucket. So I have multiple buckets with multiple denominations. So we're gonna head back to the studio here, Sorry. see how well it works out. Really? So. No. I'm learning how to use cameras. Boo. I picked up like an extra hundred dollars at Menards by going through the parking lot a long time ago It wasn't recent at all going and finding receipt stubs in the parking lot when they have their rebates going on It's like someone bought like a thousand dollars worth of stuff and I got with a hundred dollar rebates great Make sure you like and subscribe and don't miss the next vlog where and we're gonna go and inspect it and the keys are stolen